All right, Andy, so obviously uh, with the construction, things are changing. What would you want fans who are coming to the game Saturday? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is um, even though there's a big hole in the ground and fans are going to see a lot of progress with the new stadium construction site, uh, the number of parking spaces really from last year to this year for cars is, is really about the same. So that's good news for fans for the first year of the construction project. Now that might change in year two and three of the project, but uh, so we feel pretty comfortable that the traffic patterns and the number of car spaces will be comparable to last season. So if, if should people plan to alter their routes or timing, like what would it, approach and entry into the stadium, does it change at all, I guess? Yeah, you know, really we don't think that the traffic patterns are going to change much at all. We've had a lot of meetings in the off season. Uh, we've met with Erie County Department of Public Works. We've had the Department of Transportation from New York State, the construction project folks themselves, our parking vendors, the sheriff's team. So a lot of people involved to really help navigate this and, and look at this. Um, but yeah, the traffic patterns we feel will be very similar. The timing, you know, our fans are great. They come early. They love to tailgate. So we know that the neighborhood lots, you know, those are all still going to be open and open early, as we know. And then the Bills lots will still open four hours prior to kickoff for every game. Um, you know, the NFL mandate is three and a half hours, but we, we always like to keep it at four to keep the tailgating atmosphere going. So, uh, so no, we really don't see too many changes uh, forthcoming. We'll be navigating this every game. Uh, we, we took a good look at it on Friday night. I know it was an open practice, um, but that was a good first kind of blush at things. And then this, this weekend, Saturday, we'll take another look at everything. You mentioned kind of time frame earlier. In the, so is, is this going to evolve during the course of the season relative to the construction project? Or is this, like for this season, is it going to remain essentially unaffected and then in future years you'll have progress? Yeah, we think that this season it'll be very similar as we go through the entire season. But absolutely, every game we're going to take a look at the operation the traffic flow, any any accidents that might have caused issues for us. Um, we're not afraid to make changes on the fly if we need to, so we've got a great group of people that are involved here. Um, and then, of course, hearing back from the fans, you know, uh, the team is great. People are here. It's sold out venues every game. Last year we had uh, ingress delays and egress delays because we have 70,000 people here staying the full game. So I know years ago that wasn't necessarily the case, but uh, yeah, we, we really anticipate it to be somewhat similar to last season. Andy, are there are any? Sorry. If fans are campers, will they be allowed in any one of the Bills lots, or are they just not allowed at all? So great question on the campers. This year, they're not going to be allowed in any of the Bills lots. So we have spoken with all the camper um, slash RV owners. Um, they're all season ticket holders. They, they understand what we're going through. Uh, we're trying to maximize the number of spaces for fans to park. And um, we are bringing the camper lot back in 26, right? So when the project's over, they know it's coming back. And our design team, our construction team, our architects are really excited about what that might be. We're excited about what that might be. And there's a lot of cool ideas around that. Um, but the neighborhood lots, as fans know, they're parking RVs, they're parking buses. Uh, we know that. The lot on California, the Wings lot, is, is proactively, uh, you know, advertising for parking on our, for RVs and buses on their property. So uh, we think a lot of those fans will either not bring their RVs, a lot of them, a lot of them have told us that, or that they'll just find another location in one of the, the neighboring lots. Are there any lots that you guys opened up to compensate for the ones that had to be closed as a result of the construction? Yeah, you know, the reason why it sounds hard to believe almost, right, that how do we have the same number of car spaces? Well, the, the RV lot's not coming back, right? So that is being displaced by the construction project. That saves us some spaces. Our bus and limo lot, we're reducing that capacity this season. So even though that is coming back, uh, but that also was in the construction zone. So that's at a smaller capacity. And then our, our game day staff parking, uh, we're opening that up completely to fans. So we're, we're, we used to have almost 3,000 game day staff park, you know, in our two number lot. Uh, that's now going to be open for fans. And then the game day staff are going to park at the ECC campus in an area that's never been for parking before. So that really helps us in this first year of the construction project. Is it one of those things where you kind of have to take it game by game? Of course, practice, 
although packed, was just practice, where now you'll see more and more people come as the games go on for the season. Is it going to be a learning experience almost for you guys to see how things go each time? I mean, it's always a learning experience. Every game we kind of learn something new and different. Even though the stadium's been here since 1972, um, it's funny how every year we're, we're changing things up or making things better, trying to help with, with the traffic patterns and the parking operation. Um, you know, we, we anticipate it's going to be packed day one. You know, so our goal, our plan is to, to prepare as if we're going to have 70,000 fans here this Saturday and every game throughout the season. Um, we know that maybe in the winter months or some of the snowy games or, or bad weather games, there might be a few less people here. Um, but we still plan to you know, have a full house every game. But that doesn't mean we're not taking a look at it every game either. We're always taking a look at the operation. Why was traffic slower on the ingress for a certain game versus another? Um, you know, in the past, sometimes that's been accidents on the 90, or it's been snow and weather, which delays things. But, um, you know, we'll definitely be looking at it every game. What did you learn or change from the practice last week? You know, the practice last week, we learned that, hey, Friday night traffic is not the best night to have a practice, right? When we've known that for a couple of years. Um, but we did have two accidents that day, one on the 90, one on the 290, and that certainly hurt, hurt us a little bit. Uh, we also learned that even though there were a lot of cars um, coming in that we thought were coming in for the practice, uh, a lot of it was work traffic, and it wasn't necessarily folks coming to the game. So, you know, Friday nights, the team loves it. We love it. It's a fun atmosphere for practice, um, you know. But we do limit the tickets for that event on purpose because of that reason. Yeah. It goes without saying, but are you encouraging fans to get there early for Saturday, especially with the Erie County Fair and the traffic that will go hand in hand with that? Yeah, you know, we're we talk with the uh, Erie County Fairgrounds folks, and they're great partners of ours, and, and we work really closely with the sheriff's team and a lot of different people on this. The good news about Saturday is it's a one o'clock game and versus a night game. And in the past, we've had a lot more difficulty with the fair, the fairgrounds as well, with traffic and staffing that maybe share you know both events. So the one o'clock game actually will help us. Um, you know, we want fans to come and enjoy the Kids Day experience and be there uh, for the opening of the event. But uh, no, I'm not, not really asking fans to come early or change anything there. Uh, everybody feels fairly comfortable that the time of 1 o'clock is, is a big help for everybody. Just to clarify an earlier question for the RDs, y'all reached out to them. So you guys reached out to them to say, like, hey, this is changing, or they had to reach out. Like, how did that work, that process? Yeah, so we, we reached out to them. And then, of course, our ticket office is great. They take a lot of, of calls from the neighborhood lots and, and from um, the fans as well to help explain what we're doing. Uh, but, yeah, we reached out to them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody.